Hi guys, this is Mr. Herbst here, and today's focus is going to be on cell energy and life. Now, all living things need energy to survive. Without that energy, well, they would be dead. Where does that energy come from? Well, that energy comes from food. Um, ultimately, that food comes from the sun. Our key concept here is that where do plants get the energy they need to produce food? Well, they get that energy from light. They get that energy from the sun. Um, it, this is an amazing process. Just the fact that plants can take in light and make food from that, that is amazing. Uh, we have two types of organisms. We have our autotrophs and we have our heterotrophs. Um, organisms such as plants uh, which can make their own food, we call those autotrophs. And organisms such as animals like you and me, um, they need to eat their own energy. They, we need to obtain our own energy. We are called heterotrophs. Now those two are very big words. So let's go ahead and break those down a little bit. The word auto, <clears throat> that means self. The word hetero, that means other. And the word trough, well that means food source. So you put those words together a little bit and you get autotroph, self food source, well now it makes sense. Plants are able to make their own food uh, as opposed to us. Heterotrophs. Heterotrophs are other food source. We need another food source. We can't make our own food. We need to find it from somewhere else. Um, a ATP is, is the energy molecule of our cells. Uh, it is an important chemical compound that cells use to store and release energy. It's, it's scientifically known as adenosine triphosphate, which is abbreviated ATP. ATP is used by all cell types as their basic energy source. Um, now let's go ahead and investigate what ATP actually is in a little bit more detail. You see this this um, this yellow block of stuff right here? That is our adenosine. That is the backbone of our ATP molecule. Then we have this this guy right here. He acts like a uh, a binder. He holds things together. That is our ribose. That is our our that is our sugar molecule that helps to hold the whole molecule together. He's like he's like the nucleus that stores the that stirs the drink, man. You know, he's just like a, he's like the the fun guy at the party. He holds things together for us. And then finally, we have our three phosphate groups. Uh, these are P, P, and P. Each one of those P stands for a phosphate. Therefore, we have three of them. Um, they are the area that actually is responsible for storing and releasing the energy. Let's talk about that in a little bit more detail. But first, um, we can have energy that comes in all sorts of sources. We have energy that comes in, in forms of light, heat, and electricity. Uh, this here is a picture that's representing energy that's coming in from the sun. That's our light energy. Um, it doesn't seem like we can walk around and get much energy from light, but, but believe it or not, light holds a whole lot of energy. And then we have energy from heat. That is something that we can actually feel. When we feel warm, that is actually energy. Heat can do stuff for us. That, that, that has the ability to be energy. And then finally, um, we can store energy in chemical compounds as well. If you don't believe me, well, if you think about it like this, when you're putting gasoline in your car, or when your parents are putting gasoline in your car, they're putting this liquid substance. Uh, that liquid substance is, is nothing unless it's burned. It is chemical energy that is stored inside the chemicals. So, uh, in a sense, ATP is a little bit like gasoline. It's stored energy. ATP, uh, ATP has two phosphate groups. So this molecule right here on the left, 
That is ADP. That is adenosine diphosphate. Um, a cell can add energy or can store energy by adding a phosphate group to ADP. What happens when we add a phosphate group to ATP? Well, then we get adenosine triphosphate. Di, uh, think of like bi. Bicycle, two wheels. Tri, three wheels. Tricycle. So, um, once we add on another phosphate group, um, here I have a representation of that phosphate group being added into our adenosine diphosphate. Uh, we, we get adenosine triphosphate, where we have now three phosphate groups. Um, that is the storage molecule for energy. It doesn't store a whole lot of energy, but nonetheless, that is what our cells are going to use for energy. You can think of it kind of like this. Well, um, well, here adenosine diphosphate is like a battery that's not charged all the way. And, fine, and, and when you charge it up, you get a battery that's charged all of the way. So it's, it's sort of like uh, adenosine triphosphate is sort of like a battery. It's a storage. Uh, it, it stores energy. It's a storage unit for energy. Now, how do our cells release energy? Um, or how does ATP release energy? Well, energy stored in ATP is released by breaking the chemical bond between the second and third phosphates. So here I have, this is phosphate 1, this is phosphate 2, and this is phosphate 3 right here. Our cells will break off this bond right here, and it will release energy. Well, why does that happen? Well, because uh, these phosphates don't like to be bound together. They're sort of like a spring. The more you push a spring together, the more that it's going to want to shoom right back at you, right? Well, uh, you push these phosphates together too much, and the, the, the more that they want to come apart. So these phosphates, uh, phosphate 1, 2, and 3, they don't like to be bound together. So our cells can easily rip off the bond between the second and third phosphate, and, and tons of energy is released. It's sort of like a spring, as if you were to compress that spring, and then suddenly pfft, all that energy from the spring is released. So that happens right here, between the second and the third phosphate. So what is the role of ATP in our cells? Well, we have tons and tons of roles of ATP in our cells. Uh, the energy from ATP is needed for most cellular activities. Uh, pretty much almost everything requires ATP. Uh, active transport, we talked about that in our last unit, um, where, we have, where we need things that, that cross the cell membrane. We need to make proteins. Protein synthesis, that is a scientific word for making proteins. Making proteins requires energy. And muscle contraction, um, the, the ability for me to just simply go like this and, and contract my muscle requires ATP. Um, almost everything in our body needs ATP. ATP's characteristics make it exceptionally useful as the basic energy source of all cells. Um, in fact, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and, and abbreviate ATP as the energy currency of cells. You know why? If you think about it, ATP is a little bit like money in the fact that almost everything that you need, you do on a daily basis requires money. And so basically everything that the cells need to do require money. So it is the energy currency of cells. Now how do we use that biochemical energy? Uh, most cells have only a small amount of ATP because it's not a good idea uh, it's not a good way to store large amount of energy. So we actually store large amounts of energy as fat. But when our cells actually need that energy, we're going to break down that fat and we're going to make uh, ATP molecules. Um, cells can regenerate ATP from ADP uh, pretty easily. Um, so ADP is a small mo is, is is a molecule that is like that battery that's not fully charged. We can easily, our cells can easily put that phosphate right back on, jam it right back on, and make ATP. So it's usually not that tough of a thing to do. We use, I have a picture of sugar.
primarily we use sugar to do that. Uh, sugar is um, mostly glucose. Glucose will break down into uh, several different compounds, and in the process of breaking down glucose, we release ATP into our cells. So glucose ultimately is where the energy is stored, but in order for us to get that energy so that we can use it, we need to break that glucose down into ATP. Uh, here I have uh, some sugar uh, CNH. Uh, interesting enough, some interesting facts, is that CNH stands for California and Hawaii. Because back in the day, the United States used to get most of our sugar uh, from Hawaii. The, uh, Hawaii would grow the sugar, and then Hawaii would transport the sugar to California where it would be processed. So that's where CNH sugar actually gets its name from. So let's go ahead and review. Organisms that can make their own food are called... What do we think, guys? Those are autotrophs. Autotrophs can make their own food. Most autotrophs obtain their energy from sunlight. Now, the reason I said most and not all is because I have a picture here of uh, a underwater geyser. This, this is lava spewing up from the bottom of the ocean. And this... Um, this is a lot of heat. There's a lot of heat here, and there's a lot of different kinds of compounds here. Uh, there is bacteria that lives on the bottom of the ocean. It's actually really cool. This bacteria that lives on the bottom of the ocean can use the energy from that geyser right there. So even though it's not getting the energy from the sun, it is getting in the energy from the earth. So not all autotrophs get, have to get energy from the sun, but most do. Um, most organisms will capture their energy from the sun. How is energy released from ATP? One phosphate is removed. How is it possible for cells to function with only a small amount of ATP? Well, ATP can be quickly regenerated from ADP into ADP. So that, that extra phosphate can be quickly jammed right back onto that ATP, um, and thus we have our energy source. Uh, this it concludes our focus on cell energy. This has been Mr. Herbst, and I'm signing off, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Have a nice day.